What is going on everybody? This is Johnny and today I'm going to show you how to perform culinary alchemy whereby we take something that people normally throw in the trash and convert it into pure liquid gold. Now what I'm referring to is making stock with the leftovers from a rotisserie chicken. And because we're going to use a pressure cooker, it takes little to no effort and also little to no time. The stocks that you get in stores, let's face it, they, they suck. However, the stock that we're going to make is pure magic. Here's what you'll need. We are going to start by trimming the root ends of the onions. Now there can be some grit left on these, so it's best to just get rid of them. We can however maintain the peel. Then we are going to proceed by cutting the onion into quarters. We also want to give the same treatment to the carrots by cutting off the stem ends if they're older carrots and they've been sitting around for a while. However, if they're fresh carrots, you can leave the stem ends on. Now we just want to take the carrots and cut them into three to four inch pieces. You can cut them smaller if you like. However, since we're using a pressure cooker, it just isn't necessary. These chunks are effectively going to be mush when we get done, so give the same treatment to the celery. Then we just want to go ahead and smash the garlic. We can leave the paper on, that's no big deal. It's all gonna get strained out later. You then want to throw everything into your pressure cooker, being cognizant of the max fill line. Sometimes it takes a little bit of effort to squeeze everything down in there. You can cut things into small pieces if it makes things easier. Here we have all of our ingredients, the scraps from two chickens, and it seems to fit pretty well. Don't forget to add your herbs as well as your peppercorns. Now here you can use parsley. It's a great addition to this, especially if it's just the stems. Our last addition to this is going to be water. Here I used seven cups. You wanna get it up to about the max fill line. Try to cover most of what you have there, but it's not absolutely necessary. Just avoid filling it too much. Put on your lid and seal it. From here, we are going to cook this on high pressure for 45 minutes. Now I have a Ninja Foodi. It's pretty amazing. It does just about everything an Instant Pot will do, plus more because it has an air fryer. I've put a link to that in the description, as well as an Instant Pot and an old school pressure cooker if you don't have one of those yet. When we're making stock, we can pretty much use whatever vegetables we have left over or scraps. However, I would avoid brassicas as they can be very bitter, things like cabbage and Brussels sprouts. Once your pressure cooker is done, release the steam and let it vent. Make sure you tilt the lid away from you while you open it. And here's something that's really interesting. I don't know if you caught that, so I'm actually gonna speed it up. As I remove the lid, you can actually see the vegetables deflate. It's pretty amazing. And I'm just gonna do some gratuitous close-ups of it and inflate and deflating and okay, that's probably enough. We are going to let this cool a little bit before we start handling it, but it does look beautiful at this point. After a couple minutes, you can pop that out of there, and then we are going to strain this. I recommend grabbing some tongs and pulling out some of the larger chunks, because this can get quite messy if you just try to dump it out. Once we pull out some of the larger chunks, you can then ladle the rest 
you may have noticed that I did not add any salt. If we were cooking this on the stove, I would probably salt it from the get-go. However, since this is a pressure cooker, I'm going to wait until it's finished and then salt to taste. On this particular occasion, however, I'm going to be making soup with it the next day. So I didn't salt this at all. I'm going to use this stock to make chicken zoodle soup. And once that video is edited, I will throw a link up in the upper right hand corner. Once drained, we can jar this for storage. Now, a lot of recipes call to skim off the fat. However, I don't really see the point in that, unless there's way too much, because fat is flavor, and flavor is, well, fantastic. So I just leave it. Just as an FYI, this is going to gel up as it cools. Don't worry, that's a good sign. It means we've drawn out the collagen. There's a lot of flavor in that, and it's good for you. It'll give your soup a nice rich texture. And that, my friends, is how you perform alchemy in the kitchen. We've taken something we'd normally throw away and made two quarts of pure and delicious gold. If you want to store these, two to three weeks in the fridge is just fine. For long-term storage, I would recommend placing these in gallon freezer bags and then laying them flat while they freeze. That way you have a simple stackable storage solution for your stocks. It's a lot of S's. You can use these to make your soups much better, cook your rice, use it for risotto, or hell, if you're just feeling sick and you can't keep anything else down, just try drinking a little bit of it. It's amazing. Making your own stock. It doesn't suck.